Hello friends, Osiris here and the next 7 star terror raid event for Ember has been announced in Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. In today's video we're going to go through some of the best builds to help you prepare for when this event goes live later this week. <laughs> So kicking off on the 14th of June, running through this weekend until the 16th, we're going to see the first phase for the 7-star Emboar come to Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. It will be an electric terror type as well, so the first time we're going to have a mighty small Pokemon with that electric terror typing. Going to be a very interesting one. Of course, the following week after that, from the 21st until the 23rd of June, it will return for its second phase out and it will return with Blissey Terror Raid events. Now, this one, I think, is going to be quite a tricky raid for a number of reasons. And I think we'll get into it as we start off as usual. It's taking an overview of what we could see on the Emboar. Now, at its base typing, it is going to be a fire and fighting type Pokemon. So we can expect to see those type of moves. It's going to have a pretty high base HP stat as well. So you're looking with that 30 times multiplier around the 10,000 towards maybe 11,000 HP mark as well. It's going to have its hidden ability as usual with the 7-star Terror Raid event Pokemon. That will be Reckless, so any moves that have recoil damage with them, the Reckless ability kind of gets rid of any of that recoil, so they're kind of free to use things like Flare Blitz, Wild Charge, Head Smash. They're big, powerful attacks that have a lot of recoil with them. You're not going to get any of that recall. So it's a big selling point for this raid and why. And maybe we'll see a lot of those moves implemented on the Embo to take advantage of that ability. Now for attacking options, you're primarily going to see, and I would bank on it being a physical attacking Pokemon. I don't see any way around where it's going to be. A special attacker might have the odd special attack and move to take advantage of either that fire typing with something like overheat. But outside of that, I would say... You can stay in the lane of the physical type attacker for this Embo. It primarily is going to have the higher physical attacking stat to its special attacking stat. And it's got options to boost that attacking stat up as well, where it doesn't really have the options for that on the special attacking side of the spectrum. Flare Blitz is going to be probably something that we definitely do see from this Embo. I would imagine as well we'll see Wild Charge. It is one of two only electric type attacks that Embo has access to. And with that reckless ability, you would say it's more likely to have the stronger recall attacking option in Wild Charge to take advantage of the reckless ability rather than the Thunder Punch or even something like Terror Blast. Head Smash is a rock type coverage move that we're going to see probably on the Embor. Again, another recall damaging move. So very powerful attacking move. And the Reckless ability makes it with no drawback at all. So with the coverage there that you've got between the Flare Blitz, the Wild Charge and the Head Smash. And then you're going to throw in a Fighting type attack as well. You've got very good coverage on this Ember. It also gets good options in things like Earthquake, something else we could see. Knock Off as well. And also Trailblaze as well is something that we have to keep an eye out for. Being one of its only grass attacking physical moves, it will give it the option as well if it does have Trailblaze. To boost its speed tech if it relies on that as an option. A uh, set of options that the Embo's got, things like Bulk Up, it's going to boost its attack and its defense stat by one stage every time it uses it. Curse is another one that we could see it maybe play on, especially if it goes down the line of not using close combat and something like Hammer Arm as its fighting type attack move. Um, that's going to lower the speed stat as well as boosting the attack and defense stat. Primarily, all of these boosting options are going to be boosting that attack stat and its defense stat, making it very hard to take down, especially if you are bringing a physical attacker to this battle. Sunny Day is an option to boost the power of those Flare Blitzes or fire type attacks that it does have. Will O Wisp is an option that I think we could potentially see because it would really neuter any physical type attackers even further if we do bring them to this raid. And then, like the Swamp Herd, it does get access to Yawn, so something that could we could see to disrupt our side of the field. Something just to bear in mind when we're going against the Embo. Now, I think the big thing that you have to really identify about the Embo is it's got absolutely amazing coverage. And this is why I say it's going to probably be quite a difficult raid. And it's probably the best idea to hold off building anything in game, which is kind of counter indicative of this video. Um, before the raid goes live because it's got such an array of different attacking options it's really hard to kind of pin down and say okay it's going to have this move this move this move because if it doesn't have one of those coverage moves it really opens the door up for a certain pokemon certain typing to come in and have a really easy time against this pokemon say if it's got trailblaze 
Things like Swampert, Quagsire are going to be really difficult to bring to this raid because the four times weakness that they've got before they can Terrastalize makes it extremely difficult for those Pokemon to work in this raid. The other thing as well, Armor Rouge that we're covering in today's video, if the M Ball does have Head Smash, it makes it so difficult to bring that Armor Rouge. So this is why I say that we're going to have some options in today's video of what could be potentially good, but it will all hinge on the fact of these coverage moves. If it doesn't have Head Smash, I'd say Armor Rouge is probably by far going to be one of the best builds for this raid doesn't have trailblaze of course you can look at things like swampert quagsire there will be good options but until we know what happens when the raid goes live later this week i think these are just some options to look at hopefully it helps get some kind of creative juices flowing for yourself get some ideas out there but like until we know exactly what coverage moves this embo has how to interact in the raid i don't think we can pinpoint some of the best builds just yet but we'll jump into it now i'll show you what i've put together in preparation for this raid event going live later this week and as always friends all of the builds that we feature in today's video will be down in the description below if you want to take a look at them closely after the video be my guest but we're going to start off with clod sire and i think clod sire is going to be a good option against the embo in for a few reasons the poison typing gives it a resistance to the fighting type attacks. The ground obviously gives you the immunity to any electric type attacks. And having this stellar terror typing, you kind of keep that poison and ground typing in the raid. So you keep those immunities once you do terrestrialize and get the boost to your moves. I'm going to go with the item, the shell bell, uh, level 100, hyper trained, of course, as well. And if you don't have the DLCs, but you do have Clod Sire, I still think a ground terror typing will work just fine on this build. So if you don't have the Indigo Disc to get stellar terror shards, just go with a ground terror typing on the Clod Sire because I, I do think that will work fine. I just think there's a bit more of an advantage in this raid in particular. We're going for the stellar terror type over anything else. Move set we're going to go for with the Clod Sire is going to be Recover, Rain Dance, Curse, and Earthquake. Uh, the EV spread that we've got is going to be 252 EVs in attack, 252 EVs in defense, and then in adamant nature with the remaining EVs, those six just put into HP. And the big important thing here for the Clod Sire is going to be the unaware ability. Now, I can imagine that the Embo is going to set up a lot throughout this raid using those bulk ups, using those curses, things like that. So for this reason, I think the unaware ability is going to be so, so crucial because unaware, it helps us ignore any stat boosts to the opposing side of the field. So if the Embo is going for those bulk ups, getting those plus three, four, five to attack and its defense stat, we can ignore those and we can take advantage of our curses. Now we're going to get a defense boost when we do get the curse up. So plus one in attack, plus one defense and minus one speed. The thing is the Embo will ignore those defense boosts on our side of the field, but our attacking boosts will ignore any defense boosts on the end ball. So it means we can hit it for harder and more curses that we get under our belt. I think it's going to be a very potentially good option going into this raid. And one that I will definitely test first off, Clod Sire as well. Um, the Quag Sire that we're going to cover in a minute is pretty, pretty similar, but uh, has some different options to it as well. But I do think Clod Sire could be a very good option going into this, this raid. Obviously, the Rain Dance there gives a little bit of a buffer against those fire type attacks that could be coming out like the flare blitzes so you can handle those a little bit better the recovery is just for longevity during the raid and then the shell bell item is just there to help you get that damage out consistently throughout the raid and get recovery as you're going through it next up is going to be quagsire and again because of the typing the base typing that we do have the water and the ground we're going to go with the stellar terror typing on this i think as well also ground could work on this if you don't have stellar terror shards so that's something that you can consider. But the Stellar Terra typing, the water typing, you're going to get resistance to those fire type attacks. And you've got the immunity to electric type attacks from uh, the M Ball, which is always going to be useful that you'll be able to carry through once you do Stellar Terrastalize. Shell Bell is going to be the held item for a line of recovery, level 100, hyper trained, of course, as well. Very similar to the Clod Sire in a lot of respects. We've got Recover, Curse, Mud Slap, and Earthquake. Unaware, again, is the hidden ability on this. Quagsire are uh, going to be able to do exactly the same things as that Clod Sire. EV spread going to be exactly the same as well. 252 attack EVs, 252 in defense, and then the remaining six in HP. Mud Slap gives you a way to chase down your terrestrialization to the point where you can stellar terrestrialize very early on in the raid. Recovery, self-explanatory for recovery. Curse helps you boost your attack stats so you're 
damage output is going to be better throughout the raid. And with the unaware, you're going to ignore any defense boosts that the Swampert gets under its belt and attack boosts. So you're able to take things a lot better. Um, and then the Earthquake is going to be your big damaging attack and move throughout this raid. But I do think Quagsir could be still a very good option just with that base typing. Talking about base typings of water and ground, the next one is going to be Swampert. The last 7 star terror raid that we had, and I do think a very good option going into this raid as well. Again, stellar terror typing, probably going to be the more preferable option on this if you've got access to it. Again, ground typing will work nonetheless. Shell Bell held item for a line of recovery. You're going to probably need it more on the Swampert than you do on the Quagsire and the Clodsire if you go with this option, uh, just because you don't have recovery. Level 100, Hyper Trained, and then we have the moveset of Bulk Up, Screech, Chilling Water, and Earthquake. The ability here, Damp's not really going to provide any, any benefit, so the Torrent is probably the preferable one. EV Spread, again, going to be 252 in attack, 252 in defense with the remaining EVs in HP, and Adamant Nature, of course, as well. The basic premise of this build, and I think it's going to be very good, going into this raid is you're going to be able to utilize that bulk up you're going to boost your attack and your defense so you're going to be able to take attacks a lot better from the ember when it is throwing them out at you of course with the water type you're going to have the resistance to those fire type attacks uh the ground gives you the immunity to the electric so you only have to worry about those fighting type attacks that come out screech is there for when the shield isn't up on the opposing side of the field and you can lower that defense stat by two stages Chilling Water will work through the shield, and every time it hits, you're going to be able to lower that attacking stat. So you're going to be able to really keep the Embor in check using the Swampert. So I think a very good option going into this raid. And then the Earthquake, self-explanatory, going to be the biggest attack and move going out and doing the big damage once you've got those bulk ups kind of set up and the screeches as well. So I think Swampert could be a very good option going into this raid. Honestly, it's got good defenses, um, good, good base typing. And it's got the, the ability to lower the defense on the Embo as well as boost your own attack as well. So they're the kind of key things that you want when you're trying to speed through and solo these raids. So I think Swampert could be a very good option indeed. Next up is Armor Rouge. And this one might be good. This one might not be viable at all. And it all hinges on the fact whether or not Embo has access to that head smash or not. If it doesn't have access to head smash or earthquake or knockoff, I think the Armor Rouge is going to be a very, very, very strong option and could run through this raid very quickly. But it all hinges on head smash, really. I think the earthquake's probably unlikely on the Embo. But the head smash is probably quite a likely option if it doesn't have it though i think the armor rouge is going to be very strong against this pokemon so fire and psychic typing as its base typing it's going to resist the fighting type attacks it's going to have the immunity to any fire type attacks the only thing it's going to have to worry about pre terrestrializing is going to be those electric type attacks which we will be able to handle with the moveset Shell Bell is going to be the held item. Terra typing is going to be ground. Uh, level 100 hyper trained, of course, with the move set of Iron Defense, Acid Spray, Calm Mind, and Scorching Sands as the TM, the uh, ability. And I think you need the DLCs to get Scorching Sands. So if you've got the base games, you're probably going to have to rely on Terra Blast there, which isn't terrible, which isn't terrible on this set. EV spread for the Armor Rouge that we're going for is going to be 252 special attack 252 in defense with a modest nature the remaining evs put into hp flash fire is the most important thing uh, the ability here on the armor rouge giving you complete immunity to those fire type attacks that come out from the embo now the idea of this set is probably going into the raid turn one you're going to get an iron defense up boost those defenses so you're taking those physical type attacks a lot better then you're going to go for those acid sprays you're going to lower this special defense on the embo by two stages every time you do it get it down to minus six hopefully before the shield goes up and then get a big scorching sands off when you can terrestrialize once your stats and abilities have been nullified for a turn which is likely to happen then you can go for those acid sprays again the iron defense you probably only need one maybe two in this raid and then you calm mind up and then you just win the raid with scorching sands sounds very easy right it's not got head smash i think it will be i think it'll be a, probably a really good option and uh, the reason why i haven't went with serral edge here is because the armor has the 
the ability to use acid spray and hit it on the special side because I do expect the M ball to boost its defense stats so you'll probably want to hit it on the special side preferably and I think you'll have a lot more ease doing it with the armor rouge as long as it doesn't have the head smash but that's that's the thing so I think armor rouge is going to be a good option we'll have to wait and see for the raid going live later this week but I do think something to keep in mind uh, and potentially build it's uh, one that I'm excited about if the head smash is there though I, I think it's like a we're not using this Pokemon. And finally, today we're going to go with Skeleturge. I think another good option. It's another unaware Pokemon. And I think for a lot of reasons, it can do a decent job into this raid. So Skeleturge, Fire and Ghost typing. It's going to have immunity to the fighting type attacks. It's going to have a resistance to the fire type attacks. And it just has to worry about the electric type attacks, which you can get around as soon as you do Terrasilize into that ground terror typing. Shell Bell as the held item, level 100, hyper trained, of course. Moveset is going to be Slack Off, Mud Slap, Earth Power, and Torch Song. Ability, again, going to be the hidden one and going to be the most important one. We covered it with the Quagsire, the Clodsire. Unaware, we're going to be able to ignore all of those stat boosts on the Emboss side of the field. EV spread is going to be 252 EVs in Special Attack, 252 EVs in Defense, and the remaining 6 into HP with a modest nature. The idea of this is basically just going to be spamming Torch Song, Mud Slap, slack off until the point where you can terrestrialize you can get those special attack boosts with the torch song that you get every time you use it even through the shield and then just fire off and spam those earth powers and i think depending on the move set again it's got head smash it's going to be very difficult to use the skeleton urge but if it doesn't it's going to be another decent option and what i wanted to try and do with the pokemon that we've selected here today is use pokemon that everyone has access to in the base games get clod in the base game bikes in the base game swamp Point, not so much but you can trade it in from home from other games you don't need the dlcs to use it armor rouge of course and then the Skeleturge as well. So they're all Pokemon that are very easily accessible in games. And I think these builds have a good chance of doing well when the Embo goes live later this week. But let me know what you think. What do you think is going to be the best build, solo build, going in against the Embo? What do you expect to see the set as well? Because that's a big question about it. And then because this is the first electric terror type seven star terror raid that we've had in scarlet and violet i think it's like unknown territory for us right and you think of electric t typing as well it's only got one weakness which is ground so it makes it easy right but i think the fact that the embo has such a wide array of coverage moves it makes it very difficult to kind of pinpoint or prepare for this raid until it actually goes live so like i say heed my warning don't start building things i think uh, if you want to save resources in your game until the raid goes live, of course, we will put out the best solo build once the raid's gone live, once we've done testing and things like that to make it easy for you to beat the end ball, get it in game, and then farm for those precious Herba Mysticas. So, hope you found today's video useful, friends. It's been a fun one trying to figure out what could work against the end ball, but I think what we've kind of put together is going to be probably the best of the bunch going into it until the raid goes live, like I say. But uh, thank you, as always, for tuning in. If you enjoyed today's video, do drop a like. It does me a huge favor. It lets me know that you enjoyed these videos, and it helps share it around as well with uh, the community and people that are interested in this sort of thing. Uh, do subscribe to the channel as well so you don't miss that solo build when it goes live later this week. Make sure you turn on notifications because it will be shortly after the raid goes live on thursday evening and uh, we'll we'll leave it there thank you so much again friends have a great rest of your day and i'll catch you all in another video very soon so until then take care bye bye